Hi, in this video we're going to start talking about object-oriented programming with the question, what is a class? So we'll start off by introducing object-oriented programming. An object-oriented programming is a programming model that focuses on objects and the data and actions associated with the objects. So I want to give you a little vocabulary alert here. There's a lot of keywords to understand for object-oriented programming, but don't worry because we'll review each of the words many times. Okay, so to start off in thinking about object-oriented programming, we have a rectangle here. A rectangle, it's an object, and we can know some things about it, like its height and its width. So here's a rectangle with a width of 20 and a height of 8. And here's another rectangle. This is also an object. It's a different object, and it has a different width and a different height. So introducing objects. What's an object? An object is a structure that contains both state and behavior. So what is an object? An object is something that has both state and behavior. So here we're looking at our rectangle object. The state is data about that object. Here we know that rectangle 1 has a width of 20 and a height of 8. The behavior is the actions that can be performed by the object. A rectangle, like this one for example, might be able to get its area, which here is 160. And now it's time to introduce classes. So classes are templates for creating objects. So what's a class? A class is a template for creating an object. So let's take a look at this diagram again. Here, rectangle 1, we have an arrow pointing to it. That's a specific object. It has its own width and its own height. And now we have rectangle 2. That's a different rectangle. It's a different object. It has a width of 16 and a height of 14. But looking at both of these, they're both rectangles, and we can find some similarities. And so the question we can think about is, what might we need to create a template for any rectangle? And so we see that every rectangle has a width and a height. That's the data. That's the state we need to store to keep track of a rectangle. So here I have our rectangles from earlier and a little table below. So you can see that rectangle 1 has a width of 20 and a height of 8. And rectangle 2 has a width of 16 and a height of 14. So now we have a little template for our rectangle class. We can see that every rectangle has a width and a height. But the specific objects, they have you know, different values there. So here's the code that creates a rectangle class. We're going to dive a lot more into this over the course of this unit, but just this gives you a preview of what you know, this looks like. Okay, and when we want to make a rectangle object, there's a specific format. So to make a rectangle, we say something like rectangle rect equals new rectangle, and then we pass in the width and the height. And so to highlight a few key things here, the class name, capital rectangle, becomes the type and the object name is, is rec, that's just the variable there. And we always have the keyword new. So we'll dive more into this too, but this shows you what making a new object looks like. Okay, and let's say we now want to think about a different class. Here we have a template for thinking about a student. And every student has a first name, a last name, and a grade level. So here uh, we have a student. We have a student object. This is Ada Lovelace, a 12th grader. We've created a student object here by creating an instance of the student class. So you can see Ada in our box below has a first name Ada, last name Lovelace, and grade level 12. And as a fun fact, the reason we have Ada Lovelace here is because she wrote the first algorithm and is considered to be the first computer programmer. And this was in the mid-1800s. And this here is another student object. This is Alan Turing, who's an 11th grader. We created a student object here by creating an instance of the student class. So if you look at the table below, you can see Alan has a first name of Alan, a last name of Turing, and a grade level of 11. And a fun fact, uh, why we have Alan Turing as a student, is Alan Turing creating the model of a general purpose computer called a Turing machine and is considered the father of computer science and artificial intelligence. And say we want to go and make a student object, we have this format here. We say student student equals new student, and then we pass in the first name, last name, and grade level. So you can see the class name, student, with a capital S, is the type. And Alan here, 
That's the name of the object. So I just want to show you what a full program looks like that makes those two student objects. So we have our uh, student tester program and in our run method we make a new student for Alan, we make a new student object for Ada, and then we can print out those objects. And I'll show you what that, that does in our editor. So first we're going to start off by looking at our rectangle program. You can see on the left we have a tab that shows that there's multiple files. So if I click rectangle.java, this is our rectangle class. It's the template for creating rectangle objects. And we'll play around in rectangle tester. That's the program that's gonna run. So I'll say rectangle rect equals new rectangle 10, three. So we're making a new rectangle object. And then I'll print it out just so we can see what that does. So there you go, you can see it prints out rectangle with width 10 and height 3. So it's printing us out a description of the object. Then I'll try saying um, the area of the rectangle is plus rec.getArea and print line the height of the rectangle is rec.getHeight. So I'll run that. And you can see we have a program that tells us some things about the rectangle. Now we'll dive in a lot more into how this is working, but just wanted to show you a full working program. So now we'll, we're going to go over to this program here, and this is a program that represents a point. And so you can see this is the point class. It's a template for making points. Points have x, y coordinates. And here we have a program that, that's called point tester. So what's happening here is we make a new point. Uh, called P at position 4, 6, and then we print that out, and then we move it, and we'll print that out again. So there you go, you can see it prints out some information about the point, and I'll just try making a new one, I'll say point P2 equals new point at 1, 11, and we can also print out that point to see um, that as well. And now we'll look at one more example. And this was the student class. So you can see on the left in files, we have a student.java class, which represents our template for making new students, and then our student tester, which actually lets us run and test it out. So here's the code that we looked at earlier, which makes a student called Alan and a student called Ada. And then when we run the code, it prints out information about them. So this is a sample of using classes, and we're going to dive more into all the different pieces next.